Hey, what's up, y'all? Uh, hey, what's up, y'all? My name is Josh, and uh, so I have a blog. I'm still Josh.com, and I talk about uh, you know all kinds of amazing things uh, on my blog. But this, uh, but mainly, it's always right about um, it's always about HIV. So, with that said, uh, today uh, this week has been an interesting uh, week. If you want to know the truth about really just uh, everything in the specific, you know, like HIV, AIDS, activism world. I know a lot of the times that those that work in this field um, or volunteer like I do, uh, that we a lot of the times um, don't uh, realize that other people don't care, <laughs> right? Um, because they're not in the same kind of stuff every, every day and they're not talking about it. Um, so a couple things have happened this week that have been interesting. So Michael Johnson is a former college wrestler from uh, Missouri, and uh, he was convicted of criminal uh, exposure to HIV for non-disclosure, meaning so he infected, uh, uh, allegedly infected someone or two people, um, but uh, that he did not, ha um, he did not disclose allegedly to these people before they engaged in sex. Um, he was convicted uh, and sentenced to 30 years in prison. He was actually uh, convicted for uh, and sentenced to like 60 and a half years, but the judge decided to allow some of those sentences to run concurrently. So he's going to be in jail for a total of 30 and a half years. That's insanity, seriously, okay? Uh, 30 and a half years. Um, first, let me just say this. Uh, disclosing your HIV status prior to sex is the ethical thing to do. There is zero um, argument for me about that. However, there should not be a legal requirement for me to disclose my private medical condition legally to someone else before we have consensual sex. Um, also, these laws, uh, in my opinion, all of them should be gone. But I'm like way far left on that. Um, and here's why. Uh, some people say HIV should, if somebody has HIV and they rape someone, for example, that they should get a harsher uh, sentence in jail if they're convicted um, because they have HIV. Even harsher if the person actually contracts the virus, right? So I can understand that. I can understand that belief, but I don't agree with it. Here's why. You have two people, person number one, person number two. They're both raped the same night. Um, the person number one is raped by somebody that doesn't have HIV. And this person is raped by somebody that does have HIV. So regardless of transmission, they both go to court they both are convicted. We're saying this person over here who had HIV, who was raped by somebody that had HIV, say they that person goes to jail for 20 years. I don't know. This person over here got raped. The person didn't have HIV, so they didn't get like an enhanced sentence. So their person goes to jail for 10 years. So 20 years, 10 years. We are basically, in essence, looking at this person and saying, we understand you were raped and it was bad, but they didn't have HIV, so it wasn't as bad as this person's rape, right? It doesn't make sense to me. No, rapist should be uh, go to jail for the maximum time allowed, period. Um, I'm not gonna tell this person over here that their rape wasn't as bad because that person didn't have a private medical condition that was probably controlled by medication and was not actually uh, even infectious. Makes no sense. Follow what I'm saying? Uh, second of all, this is going to be interesting to you um, that actually those that are living with HIV, right, um, we almost always disclose our status before we have sex, right? Me, I'm 100%. Other people, for whatever reason, they, uh, for whatever reason, they may or may not, I don't know. So let's just say generally, we almost always do, right? 
except that most of the laws in the 34 or five states that have these insane HIV criminalization laws, they actually don't, um, they don't have a statute of limitations, right? So you could say five years ago that I didn't disclose and I have to worry about that, right? That's what's wrong with the HIV criminalization laws currently uh, as they are written in the US. They don't encourage disclosure. You'd be like, well, Josh, they, if you don't disclose and you get convicted, you could go to jail for 30 years, right? You would think that that's an encouragement. It's actually not. What it actually does is it encourages people to never disclose the first time and to not be tested. If you don't know you're positive, you don't have the responsibility of uh, telling your partners that you're positive. If you never disclose one time to one person, you never have to worry about accidentally not telling someone and then having to worry about that from that moment on in your life. You have to make a decision. Do you tell the person that you didn't tell and they could go to the cops and you get in trouble? Or could you, te um, or could you just hope they never find out and then disclose to everybody in the future? You see what I mean? It's just a mess. Uh, and then the last thing that is a mess with the whole situation is how do I prove that I disclosed to somebody before sex? Do I have them sign a contract? What if that person is drunk? We come home from a bar. I tell them they don't remember. I did my job, but how do I prove it? The burden of proof in court always resides on the HIV positive person. Who are they going to believe? Me? Josh? Going, ah, I disclosed right beside the person that's crying in court, looking at all of the jurors saying, that guy is a monster. They're never gonna believe me over that person, ever. It's human nature. And that's why I gotta change these laws. Anyway, I came out with a statement, right, um, about, whew, uh, I came up with a statement about uh, this uh, Michael um, Johnson thing. And I'll tell you, man, it is, it's uh, not cool that uh, he's going through that. But um, with that said, I don't know, to be honest. I don't even know if I know how to do that. Let's see. Hang with me, y'all. This is the first time I've done this, right? But you're doing so good, Josh. Um, control. Maybe not. If I don't know how to do it, then we don't have to do it. It's fine. Um, no. Okay, well, yeah. I don't know how to do it. Uh, anyway, so I'll put a link in the bottom of this so that you can go and check out uh, my statement on it. It's uh, pretty direct, uh, but I'll be happy to read my statement for you right now, um, which is simple. And then I'm going to get to the last thing, and then we're done. This is it. Uh, actually, go to uh, at I'm still Josh on Twitter, and my statement will be right there. Just look in the media section. Um, also, next, there... Uh, Here's the statement. I'm truly saddened by the unfair and, and overly harsh 30-year sentence given to Michael Johnson today by St. Charles County Circuit Judge John Cunningham. These types of non-disclosure laws do not prevent transmission of HIV and AIDS. Instead, these laws encourage individuals to refrain from being tested or remain scared to ever disclose their HIV-positive status. I'm completely outraged by the 30-year sentence and remain, and remain prayerful that a miracle will save Johnson's life from being destroyed by irrational laws that haven't been updated in Missouri since 1988. And that simply is repulsive. All right, the next thing, uh, there's a huge blog that went viral, an uh, article on my blog, I'm still Josh.com, that went viral this, uh, this week. I mean, it literally crashed my site three times. And I'm on a virtual private server. Couldn't handle the traffic request. It's about an uh, HIV positive Navy sailor, uh, a sailor with the US Navy that was um, uh, brutally assaulted, sexually assaulted. Uh, a male brutally sexually assaulted for over six hours. Um, and he comes out and he shares his story on my blog. Uh, 
is crazy and uh, the guy is a hero. So check that out at imstilljosh.com. And then the last thing, there is big news coming from the White House. Douglas Brooks, who is the director of the Office of National AIDS Policy for the White House, he's like a HIV czar, although he's really not like that. Uh, well, he is to me, but he's not a, a, a czar. Um, he's just a boss, if you know the truth. Obama has, President Obama has an amazing person in that spot. Anyway, he's done a tremendous job this year in his role leading the National Age Strategy Update, which will take us through 2020. Um, anyway, I'm really excited about this. This update is being released at the end of the month. They had listening sessions all over uh, uh, the, the United States, and then they had a forum online where you could upload your own ideas to uh, what needed to be changed in the strategy or, or what needed to be updated in the strategy or ideas. Well, it's also how I was able to get to the White House. Yes, I got an invitation. Uh, anyway, so those are the big things happening this week. I hope you're doing good. And remember, if you're, if you're HIV negative, um, or you think you are, go and get screened. And if you uh, end up being positive like me, then just get to the doctor and get on medications, and you're going to be fine. Anyway, that's that. I'm still me. You still be you.